So Jack Valenti's influence was also very strong back in the Ford administration. I name these names so that you can understand who these people are because they're the same ones over and over and over again. And people have forgotten to connect the dots to realize who these people are. When we get new people in office, consider where did they come from? Who are they? What did they do? Like our new attorney general. Our new attorney general was an attorney for Enron. Our new head of the CIA has said that no one is allowed, he has mandated already that no one is allowed to say anything against this administration, the Bush administration that's in right now, or to go against their orders. The new attorney general, had, the first thing he did was denounce the Geneva Convention, believing that in these times we should allow for torture. It's not like they haven't all along. It's just they used to do it more secretly before it came out recently. It's important that we consider that we've got the same people in place, and it's just a small handful of criminals, and it's absolutely inexcusable that we continue to leave them in power. After my father came back from Boston, Massachusetts, I was subjected to extensive systematic abuses. The sexual abuse that I had endured was extending into ritual abuse and more tortures. The ritual abuse that I experienced within our local Catholic church was very deliberate for the purposes of mind control. It's not to say that all Catholics are bad. There's some very, very good, concerned Catholics who are as outraged as you and I are that that kind of abuse is going on in the church. They're as outraged as we became when we began to learn about this Boston connection. When we started hearing about the child abuse that was emanating out of Boston. It wasn't just child abuse, although that's absolutely horrific enough. It was a very systematic form of mind control, very much a part of MK Ultra. I've been talking about that Boston connection for over a decade. And I'm so glad to see that it's finally coming to light. And yet the most key part of what's actually going on has been left out of the equation once again. Mind control, understanding mind control, gives us a comprehension of what we're actually seeing and gives us an understanding of numerous aspects of not only what we're seeing in society, but on a global scale as well. Because it's the common thread that ties everything together. It's that last piece of the puzzle that pulls the whole picture into focus where we can actually fully understand what it is we're seeing. Because once we understand it, we no longer have to fear it. We're no longer left to superstition. We're no longer left to fearing what, what's coming next, what's coming next. Instead, we know. We know exactly what's going on, and we can think beyond what we're being told. We can think beyond what the media allows us to know. We can expand our thinking and learn to stand strong with a strength of spirit and soul conviction to make a positive difference in our own lives and in our own little areas of society. And ultimately that will expand further and further and further. But it begins with awareness. The abuse that I was enduring under MK Ultra mind control was so extensive that I lost all my awareness. I lost my ability to reason. I lost my ability to question anything. More and more I could only do exactly what I was told to do with no ability to hope anymore that there was some place 
Not only did was my whole environment saturated with this abuse, but I couldn't even think anymore to hope that there was some place where people were kind. I began losing my ability to think from about the age of six on, and it was quite um, an extensive progression over um, the next several years. This included going to the governor's mansion in Mackinac Island, Michigan. At that time, George Romney was the governor of Michigan, and he was very much interested in taking a powerful form of mind control gleaned from the Catholics, taken from the Catholics, taken from the, the CIA and the Hitler-Himmler research, and, and also into the um, technological advancements, and put it into his Mormon church. George Romney was very active and very high up in the Mormon church, and they could foresee that as a strong opportunity for um, being able to lead people by in, in a religious way. People are, are easily led by a religion because they, they, they do want to do what God tells them to do, but the religion that they're being taught is outside themselves, when in fact the spirituality and relationship with God is within. And yet religion can pull people down a, a path outside themselves where they're more easily led and controlled, particularly when systematic abuses are going on and MK Ultra mind control and technological advances are being um, used as strong as they were in the Mormon church. That's not to say all Mormons are bad. There's, uh, there's quite a few Mormons who are who are standing up once they're able to think for themselves to make a positive difference and stop the abuse in their churches as well. But that's a little bit slower. The, um, the devastation wreaked on, on, on people within the Mormon church is extensive, and it's very much like the abuses that go on in uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses church that has just come into light where um, their mind control is so prevalent there as well. And every time where the mind control is prevalent, there's always abuse, and it's usually sexual abuse of the children. We need to become aware of how people are being led this way. When we have a politics that have no separation of church and state, it allows for them to... Um, dictate or to provide the information through the churches on, on a political agenda as well. And it's a, a very dangerous and a very powerful combination. Yet, nevertheless, it's all moving towards the same goal of a mind control of the masses. And Mackinac Island, Michigan, um, I also heard George Romney talk about what is now known as global education, where bringing the, um, a form of mind control into the education system and altering the history and also pumping information into the children's head at, at a rate to where they, have, they lose their ability to discern and to creatively utilize the information, but nevertheless it's just being pumped into their head especially with the onset of computerization and harmonics coming through the headphones while they're um, sitting at some of those computers. The computers were also deliberately uh, designed to alter the history that they were being taught because it was believed that to control the future, all they needed to do was control the history. Again, alter that knowledge base so that when they do formulate any thought or action, it's based on something that's totally false or, um, or is something that's lacking key elements, such as mind control, such as what really went on in Nazi Germany.